Have you ever looked into the sock drawer of a horse? It's full of socks in ones, twos, and threes, completely useless. Did you laugh? Didn't you? Well, that is the point. Either of those outcomes is perfect. My name is David Orban. This is the context. I want to be a comedian. Do I want to be a comedian? Well, maybe, maybe not. My father was an actor and he kind of made sure that I wouldn't actually go on the path of performing as an actor. But as a public speaker, I can feel that, uh, at least to some degree, I would enjoy that as well. Telling a story, hearing uh, the feedback from the audience, actually um, being able to read uh, how they react, uh, which areas are attuned to your speaking, uh, who is uh, maybe even riveted. Uh, and uh, when I deliver a keynote, after I'm done opening the Q&A, actually understanding that uh, people have been provoked into thinking, into asking themselves questions. Uh, these are indicators that uh, possibly I could attempt uh, to uh, act as well. So, being a stand-up comedian is a particular kind of acting, right? Uh, you have to make people laugh, you have to deliver the jokes, uh, the jokes have to be funny. Uh, and before any joke is funny, it isn't. Now, I don't know if the joke about the socks of horses made you laugh. Because you are not here, and as I am recording this, I have no way of uh, checking out your reaction. When I uh, invented this uh, image uh, of a horse with four legs and the same sock on each of the legs, and then any of the four missing makes uh, uh, the remaining ones uh, completely useless, not the legs, but the socks, uh, it made me laugh <laughs> very, very hard. <laughs> now, you may point out that I am silly or a nerd, and both are true. But then I tried to translate the image into a little narrative, right? Where are these unusable socks? And uh, how can you uh, deliver uh, the punchline? What is the punchline? There are certainly dozens or hundreds of different ways of uh, turning the image into uh, a joke. And that is kind of the point. When you are in front uh, of an audience, as a stand-up comedian, your job is to try out as many variants as possible to see which one works best. And the amazing thing, this can only be done via the live audience, and it can only be achieved, the desirable outcome of a joke that works, by bombing night after night after night. Until one night it clicks, and you are not bombing anymore. Even seasoned professionals, Comedians that you admire, that have Netflix specials, one after another, or whatever, uh, they sell out Madison Square Garden. 
even they need the same experience of developing the jokes, testing them, improving them until they work. And of course, during the process, they feel silly, they feel bad, they feel the hurt of the audience not laughing at the joke that doesn't work. So, this is the iterative process that I talk about so often, uh, where you know where you want to go and you know what is needed in order to get there, but not exactly how it is going to play out. And as long as you are able to measure uh, the outcome of a given step, you are able to improve, to try variants until you achieve what you wanted. A series of jokes is a bit, and a bit uh, can be quite uh, elaborate. Uh, there are different comedians that, uh, for example, set up something uh, at the beginning of uh, their bit and then build other jokes and tie back what they set up five or even ten minutes uh, earlier. And the audience uh, may not realize it, but then they remember and the laughter is genuine and uh, enjoyable in sharing uh, the smart narrative and the whole mechanism. Similarly, uh, when you are creating something that is composed of different parts, you have to make sure that the different components are properly tied together. That not only the single parts work, but also uh, the whole piece works uh, together as well. The opportunity of going out on a limb, of getting your hands dirty, of making mistakes, of understanding how and when these things can work, uh, is part of the effort that makes the result valuable. The effort that distinguishes those who actually invest in the process and those who uh, do not. The second group is potentially constituted by people who are not less loud, who are not less capable of using, for example, social media, Facebook or Twitter or Instagram. They are not less capable of criticizing but the people who put in the effort can understand that that is what matters. Criticizing, being loud, being uh, superficial uh, in these approaches is fine. It is a choice that a lot of people can make, but it is a whole another game knowing that we have put in the effort, that we have made the mistakes, and that we have achieved our goal of making people laugh. Now, as a bonus at the end, if you are here, I want to tell you another joke, and I don't know again if it will make you laugh or not, but this is actually my favorite joke. Here it goes. The saddest and the masochist meet on the street, and the masochist says, kick me, and the saddest, palm, kicks him very hard. The day after they meet again, and the masochist says, kick me, and the sadist, palm, 
against kicks him very hard. The third day, they meet, and the masochist, as expected, says, kick me. The sadist is about to do it, thinks about it a moment, and then goes, no.